and welcome. This is the Fit for Privacy podcast, the podcast for privacy professionals. I'm your host Puneet Bhatia and in this podcast we talk to privacy influencers so that you learn and get the best out of their experiences and thoughts. So let's get started. Remember this is not professional advice and if you need advice please go and talk to a professional. Hello and welcome. Today in the Fit for Privacy podcast, we have a very special guest, Nicola Fabiano. Nicola is the president of San Marino's Data Protection Authority and he's also an active researcher. So welcome Nicola to the show. Good morning and uh, thank you very much for this invitation. Thanks for being here. It's a pleasure and I'm sure our audiences would like to hear a lot from you. But before we start, if I may allow, ask you, would you introduce yourself in a little bit more depth on what you do and what's your role? Sure. Uh, I am the president of the San Marino Data Protection Authority. I would like to underline that uh, I am the first president of the first uh, DPA in the Republic. Um, however, I am an Italian lawyer, I am uh, an independent researcher, and uh, as a researcher I study the impact of emerging, of emerging technologies on data protection. Interesting, very interesting. So, <clears throat> if we may start with some quick questions so that, I mean, we developed some tempo in the meeting. Uh, and I would like to ask, what is GDPR for you in one word? Oh, uh, I think that uh, the GDPR is a landmark. And uh, we know that other countries in the world, currently, I think uh, almost 140, adopted the uh, so far laws GDPR oriented. We have to consider the GDPR not as a starting point, but uh, an end point if we think the entire training process resulted in the current final text. Interesting. So it's a starting point and it's an end point, both. No, uh, I think that uh, it, I, I consider the GDPR now as an end point. Okay. Because because uh, the work done before uh, um, the the process uh, of uh, of this regulation and uh, one uh, once the the GDPR uh, has been approved, uh, we uh, we had a, an end point to start a new era because okay. the GDPR is a revolution. Okay, GDPR is a revolution. And then what is the essence of GDPR from the perspective of authorities? Because when we talk to the businesses or uh, citizens, they have a different perspective. But from your idea, what is it from uh, an authority's perspective? Oh, I, I think that the, the, the DPA should not enter the development of technologies while Maintaining, however, an attitude of careful supervision on the impact uh, that they can have on individuals and personal data. But uh, at the same time, the DPA should implement a correct balance between the effects of technologies and their impact on personal data. This is in few words. Yeah, that's of course in few words. Oh, but very powerful words. Yeah. And then GDPR is a framework legislation. And sometimes we get into that it's not clear. And then we talk about ethics. So how do authorities look at ethics vis-a-vis -vis GDPR? Well, uh, I, I refer to uh, Article 5, 
paragraph 2 of the GDPR that states the accountability principle. Mm -hmm. In respect of that principle, also the DPA has to be accountable. And uh, however, the DPA can evaluate due in the course of its acti activities if a controller or a processor has understood what, what accountability is and how he applies ethics. Mm -hmm. It's not simple, but it's possible. Yeah, it's not simple. And that's where yeah. it's challenging for most people. Yes, of course. <laughs> but uh, uh, we are in challenging times talking about challenge. We are in very challenging times, unprecedented, unseen, unusual, whatever we want to say. Sometimes people say volatile, uncertain, and so on. But how does GDPR or what does GDPR mean for a citizen in these times of a pandemic? Um, I think that uh, the GDPR is uh, the only European legislation on data protection in force. Nothing has changed. So I believe that uh, this is our, uh, our reference and uh, we cannot dismiss from it. Okay, I'll come back to it in a later questions because I think yeah. it builds on into some of the compliance aspects of the law, especially in these times. But before that, if I may ask you slightly to elaborate on, we talk about permanent deletion. Is the permanent deletion really has to be permanent? Uh, no, definitely. According to the, G to the GDPR, a DPA has a lot of tasks and powers. So um, I think that uh, uh, the answer is no, but we can uh, deepen this topic uh, uh, later. Sure. So let's deepen this topic when we talk about compliance for law. And I think that's we have had two questions in which we parked it for later. So let's move to the next part that's compliance with the law. And if I may come back to our question on pandemic. Now, yeah. there are a lot of views around in the market, or in fact, market is closed, but <laughs> on social media and everywhere, we see a lot of views. Some people are saying, does GDPR apply in these times? Some are saying it does apply. So how do you see the correlation between pandemic and data protection? Uh, I have seen every DPA issuing guidance, but since we are here, what do you see in terms of the interlap, uh, I mean, overlap or correlation between the two? Okay, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, unfortunately, we are living in a pandemic, a pandemic time because of the coronavirus, coronavirus uh, or uh, COVID-19. But there is not an exemption, an exemption related to the processing of personal data. Uh, data protection laws apply anyway. Let me take the opportunity to clarify that the GDPR also applies during a pandemic time according to Article 9, letter I. I prefer do not go in deep also because there are some other articles which can refer to. Yeah. Um, our first thought goes to data concerning health because doctors, nurses and health operators take care of patients and hands. They process most sensitive information, exactly how it was before the pandemic. Right. People from the health sector are obliged to process personal data respecting the GDPR or national data protection laws. There are situations where, especially for data concerning health, doctors, nurses and health operators process personal data which mean to process most sensitive information. So what would that have changed now? Regarding the healthcare side, maybe the amount of personal data and people to whom they are communicated or sharp. Outside the healthcare side, there is no reason to uh, do not apply the GDPR. Those, uh, as I already say, the GDPR applies anyway. 
yeah. perhaps, perhaps uh, especially in this pandemic time, we have to pay more attention to the processing of personal data. It's also regarding the development of apps to trace people with the purposes to avoid infection and contain the widespread of the outbreak. Let me take the opportunity to recall some official statements, statements on the impact of COVID-19 issued by the ADPB, European Data Protection Board, and by the Council of Europe just yesterday. Okay. So, uh, this is my point of view uh, related to the pandemic uh, in this time. Sure. And I think one of the things people miss is GDPR does not say you should not collect data. It only says when you collect data, these are the conditions, these are the principles with which you can still collect data. And that's what is getting emphasized in the EDPB and other guidance. Yes, of course. Yeah. Of course. And then uh, one of coming back to our earlier question on deletion, uh, <clears throat> we talk about deletion in general, but when we are talking about new technologies, especially blockchain, the view is that blockchain is meant for permanence. It's not meant for deletion. And then it becomes even more complicated because are you talking about encrypting it and throwing away the key? Is that going to be sufficient? Or how do we implement deletion of permanent deletion, whatever we call it, or privacy compliance, let's put it in a simple terms, in function of technologies like blockchain. Okay, um, I have dealt and deal with data protection and blockchain, mm -hmm. especially regarding the compliance with the GDPR. Mm -hmm. uh, studying whether blockchain solutions can be developed respecting the data protection laws. We should know oh, what a blockchain is. Probably is well known due to the to the Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, the Bitcoin works on a technical structure and uh, IT architecture that is a blockchain. Yeah. Now uh, it might be complicated to explain how the blockchain works. Generally speaking, I can simply say that the blockchain is composed of several blocks linked among them as a chain. Right. And uh, this is the reason because we define it as a block chain. Every time a user generates a block, the algorithms create it filling in it some specific encrypted technical information by hash functions to avoid the node's integrity. Right. That's uh, the main issue is related to the kind of blockchain about we talk. I explain. Usually, but it is not a limited number, we know three kinds of blockchain. Uh, public blockchain, basically everyone can create a block, doesn't exist as supervisor private blockchain, there are one or more supervisors who control the creation process of each block. And the third, combined blockchain, uh, that is a mix of the public and private blockchain. Mm -hmm. Starting from this, a node cannot be deleted, but probably it is possible to modify some of its information. Yeah. Although I have tried to simplify <laughs> the <laughs> technical architecture of a blockchain is quite complicated. And uh, regarding the impact of a blockchain on personal data, we should first evaluate the kind of blockchain distinguishes if uh, is uh, a, pi a public blockchain, private or combined blockchain, right. and uh, then analyze every single issue. I think that a private 
or combined blockchain can comply with the data protection laws uh, uh, with the GDPR, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding a public blockchain, it should be necessary to achieve compliance by adopting some policies or other legal instruments. Mm, now it's difficult to 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 go in deep to deepen this topic, but sure. I think that it's possible to address uh, a compliant process. So, if I may try to summarize this complex thing, so essentially what we are saying is. While technologically there may be challenges, we need to look at uh, organizational, technical and all other legal means to protect and make sure the data becomes inaccessible or less accessible. Is that yes. what we are saying? Yes, 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 it shows, yes. Okay. We... Yeah, please. No, 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 please, please. <laughs> uh, you, you, you have to stop me because uh, otherwise I... I, I... I continue to talking. It's, uh, well, that's we, good. We, we have enough time. Much time. <laughs> we so. have enough time. Don't worry. Okay. So maybe moving on to because while we talk about compliance with law, there's also the human factor or the human element of privacy. At the end of the day, the law is for the humans to protect privacy of citizens. And nowadays, especially in the view of pandemic, we hear stories, and of course, I have not checked because I didn't go to China and check, but you hear stories, you see videos and everything saying there is an interesting evolution wherein what is happening is people are creating cameras which are monitoring temperatures. Then there's the artificial intelligence which makes correlations. And then we have IDs of people. And I saw a very scary video of Wuhan, how it's being tackled. Uh, and then it looks like on the borderline of what is right and what is ethical. And how do you see this is possible in China? This is being done in China. I hear yesterday that also in Russia, there is something very similar being done. Is that something feasible, practical in Europe or with GDPR? Very interesting question. Uh, your question touched on troublesome aspects. Right. Uh, yes, especially regarding the processing of personal data. Yes. I think that uh, we do not need special pandemic law on the protection of personal data because in Europe we have the GDPR. Right. Uh, in this, uh, in, in the last days, I, I heard people talking about uh, the needing of new legislation. I don't believe that this is the uh, the, the the right way. Thus, yeah. nothing nothing has changed than before. However, uh, we cannot ignore the directive uh, two thousand and two uh, fifty eight AC, well known as the uh, e privacy directive, right. where Article fifteen says that the member states may adopt legislative measures to restrict the scope of rights and obligations provided for some article of the same directive. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, if a member states want to address the pandemic by also using technical control systems on the, on the people to monitor their movements, and so avoiding to uh, avoiding any widespread of the outbreak should approve an ad hoc law strictly related to this topic. Who wants to develop apps, for example, by using cameras or artificial intelligence solutions should respect the GDPR anyway, starting from the data protection by the design by the default principle according to article 25 of the same GDPR. I think that it is possible to evaluate other same initiatives adopted in other countries. I refer to the South Korea, but not merely replicating them in Europe 
without considering the rules laid down by the GDPR. In my personal view, mm -hmm. welcome the innovation and development of technical solutions. Still, it is necessary to evaluate the impact of them on the protection of personal data in the current in the correct balance between fundamental rights human value and human dignity from a side and public needs from the other side while opting for ethical ethically sustainable technologies um, i think that uh, it is evident to us the china experience by the use of cameras and facial recognition, recognition on people to realize a generalized, generalized full citizens tracing system. Yeah. I think that, uh, yes, I think that uh, it is not a democratic manner and it is against the fundamental rights laid down by the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights indeed. So this is, is the situation in Europe. Yeah. I think the complexity comes, as you rightly say, the balance. There's the legal aspect of it, that's the GDPR and, of course, other laws. There's the ethical dimension on should you do it, and there are the constitution or the rights guide us. And then there's also the AI aspect of it, because artificial intelligence allows us to do some things and people get excited saying, oh, wow, we can do this. And then there's the freedom aspect of it, the citizen aspect of it as well. So what does the citizen want and how far do we go? So we can certainly address the law aspect, as you mentioned, by passing new law or overriding law in between, while it's not needed because GDPR in itself is sufficient and we have other laws as well, like the e-privacy directive and everything else. So it's basically the balancing of things, but you know, it's the balance which is the most difficult, whether for us as humans or in terms of politicians or in terms of running countries everywhere it's about balance but balance is the most crucial and challenging aspect of life yes yes of course it's quite it's not simple and it's not simple uh, any uh, activity uh, that a dpa uh, uh, has to carry out because uh, as a president uh, we have to consider uh, each each single situation, evaluating it, uh, and uh, and uh, so uh, considering a lot of a lot of aspects uh, and the topics and the, spe the specific topics related to to each uh, to each case. So it's quite complicated, but we uh, we should uh, consider. Uh, that the correct approach is uh, is uh, is just the balance the balance of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, the impact of the uh, the emerging technologies uh, uh, and um, and the fundamental rights and uh, and and data protection rights. So, yeah, I think it's. Uh... Sometimes people find reasons, like there were a few months back when the pandemic was not there, people were talking about AI is coming along and how does GDPR fit in? Do we need an AI law now? But again, people have pointed out that within GDPR, if you apply the proportionality principle and in the right way, you can find ways to be innovative while being compliant with the law. And I think the same principle extends now into the pandemic uh, situation. Yes, yes. Uh... Um, I think that uh, uh, we we cannot dismiss from the the GDPR. The GDPR applies, so uh, we have uh, a lot of principles uh, laid down by the GDPR, and we we have to consider them. Yeah, I think the voice probably broke in between. So maybe you want to repeat what you said. Uh, I said that uh, uh, the GDPR uh, applies and uh, we have to consider the principles uh, laid down by the GDPR and we cannot dismiss from them. Uh, we, we have to consider 
uh, the the rules uh, uh, laid down by the GDPR, and we 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 have to apply them. We also in the as I said in the pandemic time, uh, if a member states in Europe uh, uh, wants to adopt uh, 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 a special a special uh, uh, so a special technical solutions uh, uh, apart from the algorithms uh, related to the AE or uh, facial recognition uh, mm -hmm. has to uh, to adopt a, an ad hoc law. Uh, this is my point of view. Yeah, makes sense. And now coming back to the privacy professionals, because end of the day, we as privacy professionals have to guide our organizations, our teams, our businesses, and so on. And there's a fine balance, a fine intersection between privacy and ethics. Because sometimes we can find our way, but then it's not ethical. And how do you guide us or guide the privacy professionals, everybody around? How should we take decisions, balancing privacy and ethics when we are making decisions? Yes, I know that's uh, a challenging or a broad question, but it's a challenging and uh, yes, it's not a simple concern. <laughs> um, well, I think that uh, professionals uh, can start from the principles laid down by the GDPR and uh, for example, Article 5. Each uh, of those principles uh, is based on the transparency yeah. One, yes, uh, and should entail also an ethical approach. Ethics also, yeah. yes, ethics uh, also means to be aware of the way uh, a professional acts to respect and apply the GDPR. Mm -hmm. Professionals should consider ethics as a fundamental aspect of the protection of personal data and acting to grow an ethical approach to data protection. Mm -hmm. By an ethical approach, it is possible to achieve a good starting point to face on data protection matters. In any case, it needs that all privacy professionals and everyone who deals with privacy and data protection should be ready to raise awareness of them of uh, themselves and others on correct ethical approach. Uh, when I talk about uh, the transparency principle, mm -hmm. I I mean that uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's the main reference to understand ethics. Uh, uh, related to the principle. If I read the article, if I read Article 5, I can find a lot of principles and I can evaluate them uh, or considering uh, the ethical approach. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, because uh, I, I think that the Article 5 could be a good starting point to uh, understand what ethic, uh, what ethics, uh, uh, how ethics is uh, is applicable to uh, um, as uh, as uh, a, a kind of approach. So uh, this is my 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 view on ethics. Uh, it's uh, uh, certainly it's not uh, the final view or the final solution. We uh, uh, I uh, would like to uh, to remember the the 40 international conference uh, held in Brussels uh, in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, the light motif was uh, ethics, and so uh, I register a, a lot of attention uh, by the 
uh, so the the, co the privacy commissioners and uh, uh, data protection authorities on the uh, the impact uh, uh, of ethics uh, in uh, in this uh, in this field of data protection. Interesting. So, if I may uh, say, essentially what we are saying is, if we take a principle-based approach and follow the principles in Article Five we would have enough guidance to take care of ethics and act in an accountable manner as a privacy professional and also from an organization perspective. Uh, sure. Uh, usually we we can distinguish, we can define ethics. Ethics is, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is it's very difficult to define ethics because uh, uh, um, ethics could have uh, uh, could could be understood as a, as a, a philosophical uh, right. uh, yes, but uh, uh, so we uh, we know that that uh, ethics uh, uh, means uh, uh, what is the, the difference from uh, from the good uh, and evil uh, from uh, what uh, uh, so. Uh, but but, but uh, I think that uh, uh, instead we can find uh, um, some uh, ethical contents uh, uh, if we read uh, uh, correctly uh, uh, some articles uh, laid down by the GDPR and especially Article 5. I think yeah. that it's possible, it's possible. Yeah, but and I think you rightly summarize like saying uh, ethics varies from person to person. There's also a joke that comes to my mind, if you allow me. We say copyright. So copyright for us in Europe or US or in the first world countries is that you cannot copy it. But there was a joke saying in one of the Asian countries, somebody saying, yes, I have copyright. That means I can copy it. So I have the right to copy, but it's not the way. It's just the interpretation of things. And that's where ethics have different interpretations based on culture, sensitivities, and other dimensions. Yes, uh, uh, you are right, but uh, uh, it's 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 very complicated to talk about uh, to talk about ethic and try no, but, but trying to 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 find the definitions uh, definition. But uh, I I think that. Uh, mm, uh, the the main the the main uh, uh, the main challenge is uh, uh, to raise awareness uh, about ethics and uh, to to try. Uh, so I think that uh, professionals, uh, uh, privacy professionals, uh, should try to. Um, uh, to understand what is the ethical approach, and uh, every time uh, they uh, uh, face on a specific case, a single case, uh, they uh, should evaluate what is the the, the ethical impact, and uh, uh, so address the case. Uh, considering also ethics. Uh, right. Yeah. I think one of the principles that I have seen is when we are talking about ethics, one person may have a different interpretation, but you have multiple people or a committee looking at it, you have more chances of finding the right balance, right opportunity or right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Nicola, it has been an interesting conversation, very insightful but in essence of time and in uh, view of that each one of us is busy and I would have to also say that I would like to close it. It has been interesting to have an essence of GDPR, on AI, on deletion, then on pandemic and ethics and so on. So it's a very enriching conversation and I thank you, but I would ask if you can give us your one final word for audience, I mean, doesn't have to be a word. I mean, one final message for our audiences. Okay. Um, well, the challenge for the foreseeable future 
will be to face and uh, evaluate a concept of personal data protection uh, increasingly linked to the use of uh, extremely innovative resources and technological solution. For example, blockchain, mm -hmm. uh, Internet of Things, AE, robotics, etc. Uh, tending to move away from the legal configuration we currently know in order to approach emerging phenomena, including the exercise of democracy, mm -hmm. democratic and voting rights, access to public goods, clinical research in biobanks, information and the fight against fake news, etc. Mm -hmm. This is my short final message for the audience. And I can conclude saying, be ready, stay tuned, and uh, <laughs> probably uh, stay foolish, uh, just like uh, someone uh, famous uh, yes. <laughs> the world, man in the world said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a very nice message. So thank you for being here. It was a pleasure to have you. And I wish you all the best with your work and your career and future. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in person soon. Sure. Thanks, Nicola. So this was Fit for Privacy podcast. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any suggestions, ideas or names of people who can be guests here or you want to have your question answered, please email me info at punitbhatia.com. You can also leave a comment here. You can also follow me at my Facebook page, YouTube channel or LinkedIn. Thank you once more and look forward to seeing you back next time.